Hi, it's Dwyer. Dwyercrime.blog. Keeping it free. Blogspot.com. Both free sites. Today is June the 1st, 2020. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. I know the world right now is focused on the murder of George Floyd. Right? That's understandable. That case is simply outrageous. Unfortunately, it's not the only outrageous case out there. Right? Many people are still focused on Armand Arbery. I have a video up with my thoughts on that case. Let's talk about another outrageous situation. This one happened in Louisville. It's ongoing. You need to know about it. We, as a country, need to do better. You know the expression, safe at home, right? You call someone, you say, hey, did you get home all right? And the person says, yes, I am safe at home. 26-year-old Brianna Taylor thought she was safe at home. Brianna worked as an emergency medical technician for the University of Hospital Health. Now, on March 13th of this year, she was, let's use the phrase, safe at home with her boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, in bed. Now, earlier that night, unbeknownst to Brianna, the police had arrested her ex-boyfriend who she had broken up with the year before. They arrested him for drug dealing. The police contend that the ex-boyfriend who they arrested had had mail, possibly packages, delivered to Brianna's home in the past. Right now, that's the contention of law enforcement. Let's just back up a second and have those facts sink in. So this young woman has a boyfriend from a year ago. And at some time in the past, he apparently got mail delivered to her house. So the police obtained what's called a no-knock warrant. A no-knock warrant to search Brianna's home. And because they were undercover, they were in plain clothes, right? They, they weren't wearing police uniforms. And importantly, in this case, they also did not have on body cameras, right? The police say that when they're working undercover, the body camera might actually reveal the identity of undercover police officers. The community is not supposed to know that the individual is an undercover police officer. Now, one wonder, certainly a libertarian like me, how you could have a no-knock warrant and expect the homeowner to figure out that the person who has entered their house without knocking is a police officer instead of a burglar. Well, here are the versions Right, the police's version and Kenneth Walker's versions of what happens next diverge. Right? In my opinion, before I get into the versions, the best evidence 
is the contemporaneous 911 call that Brianna Taylor's boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, who had been in bed with her, made that night after shots were fired. Right? Understand, when someone makes a phone call, immediately after something takes place, they don't have time to concoct a story. Right? The timing's too short. The reliability of their statements is increased. Right? There's an exception to the hearsay rule called excited utterances. That's based on the same principle. So, after shots were fired, Walker, apparently, and this will be disputed, unaware that the shooters were undercover cops, picks up the phone and calls 911. And he says in the phone call, I don't know what happened. Somebody kicked in the door and shot my girlfriend. Right? His first instincts after strangers enter the home and there's gunfire is to call 911. The Louisville police admit that they fired shots in the home after entering. Right? These are the police who are undercover. They enter the home, they admit to firing shots. Walker's girlfriend, Brianna Taylor, whose home it is, was shot eight times and was lying on the floor. She would die from her injuries. By the way, after this incident, the police would search the house. They found no drugs. Now the police have a different story. They claim that even though they had a no-knock warrant, they claim that they knocked. They claim, they claim, I would say it's laughable, perhaps my expression here is giving it away. They claim that they knocked and announced themselves. They were met with gunfire, according to them, from Kenneth Walker. One of the cops got hit. It's then the cops claim that they opened fire in self-defense, hitting not Kenneth Walker, but Breonna Taylor, who at that point is getting out of bed. Right? And of course she's hit several times. In sum, everyone is claiming they acted in self-defense. Now Walker was arrested for the attempted murder of a police officer but has since been released. The charges against him have been dismissed by the Commonwealth of Kentucky. In fact, let me be more precise. The Commonwealth of Kentucky has asked that the charges against him be dismissed. Now the FBI has gotten involved. The Kentucky Attorney General is still on the case. They could, after they in investigate what happened and come up with some evidence they could present the case to a grand jury and of course Kenneth Walker could be rearrested 
and incarcerated. Now, I expect the state of Kentucky to settle the case and to pay Breonna Taylor's family for the completely unnecessary shooting of their daughter. As I see it, the no-knock warrant makes it unlikely that the cops knocked. The entire purpose of having a no-knock warrant and then going to the house while people are in bed is to catch them by surprise. It's to be able to enter the house without them being prepared for you. Clearly the cops were trying to make a case against Brianna Taylor's ex-boyfriend, the person she had broken up with a year ago, and they were hoping to find packages intended for him in her house. Right, the no-knock warrant was designed so that the people in the house wouldn't have the opportunity to hide any such packages. Let me say too, that since the couple was in bed, I doubt that the lighting was on in the house. I doubt that the house was well lit. So since the cops were undercover and were wearing street clothes, they were indistinguishable from burglars, right? You're in bed, you hear something, not a knock, but movement inside your home. This is a United States protected by the Second Amendment. If strangers, multiple strangers, are in your house with firearms, and we've all watched TV shows, we've seen police, in fact, we've watched actual crime shows, where police approach a house, they're about to enter a house, and they have their guns drawn. Right, clearly, they thought something big was going on. So no knock warrant, the police are armed. You could imagine what Kenneth Walker saw in bed. He looks up, strangers with guns, inside the home. In a Second Amendment country, I'm not surprised that Walker had a firearm, and chose to protect him and his girlfriend. Let me also say this too. The police clearly had a way out of the home. Just looking at the sequence of events. Because there's a shootout, and then Walker has enough time to grab the phone who he calls determines his state of mind, right? It's indicative of it. He calls 911. He believes the state of Kentucky is going to help protect him. He's calling the state of Kentucky. He doesn't understand that it's Kentucky police officers, Louisville police officers who've just been in his house shooting his girlfriend eight times. Right, so given the fact that the police were able to exit the house and the facts are coming out, I'll amend this video if necessary if the facts come out and show something different. Given that the police were able to exit the house and Walker was able to call 911, I find the act of the police shooting Breonna Taylor, who did not have a gun, eight times to be completely unwarranted and completely excessive. Especially given 
that I don't believe the cops announced themselves since they went to the trouble of getting a no-knock warrant. Let me say that Walker's call to 911 is consistent with him not knowing that the intruders were cops. And importantly, no drugs are in the home. So neither Walker nor Breonna Taylor, who's dead now, killed, had any reason to shoot at the police so that they wouldn't find the drugs. Right? Understand, neither Breonna Taylor nor Walker was on the run. They thought they were safe at home. I view this case as an outrage. I encourage people concerned with justice and civil liberties, as well as gun rights, to keep an eye on this case. Let me hear from you. The information is coming out in parts, right? For some reason, the city of Louisville did not even release the 911 call for several days, right? That 911 call just came out a few days ago. The police chief for Louisville has announced that he's going to retire in a few weeks, <laughs> right? I find it curious that they arrest Walker, then they dismiss the charges against him because, in my opinion, they looked at the evidence and they understood this shooting's unjustified. Some people, let me raise my hand, will believe that he acted appropriately. They'll think to themselves, if I'm in bed with my girl, and I look up, and they're strangers with guns. What am I going to do? I'm telling you, a lot of men will try to defend themselves. Right? I shouldn't even say a lot of men. A lot of people, men and women, will try to defend themselves. Also, don't the cops lose credibility? When you're hearing about a no-knock warrant, but... Now the cops want you to believe that even though they went there when people were in bed, they knocked. They, they disregarded the warrant and knocked. That just doesn't sound believable. That's discredited by the 911 call. In fact, it's discredited by the fact that Walker's idea was to call 911. So if you feel I've misrepresented the facts, I hope you leave that information in the comment section of this video. If you have additional information that you want to add, I hope you leave that information in the comment section of this video. Let's use YouTube's interactive features. Thanks for stopping by.